Hi, my name is Jonathan. We live in an interesting time, don't we? Where it seems like every day things are not getting better, but quite the opposite, it's getting worse. Many people, it seems like they're asking the question, when is this going to come to an end? When can we go back to our normal life? Characterized by fear, doubt, confusion, and anxiety. People looking for hope, especially in this time, uh, as we're celebrating the Easter, the resurrecting story of our risen Savior. And I just want to take a moment to share how I found unshakable hope in whatever circumstance when Jesus changed my life. I was born in the state of Kentucky to a mother who was a devout believer and a father who was a dogmatic atheist. My father was a brilliant man, had a PhD in geochemistry, a scientist who just not simply could not believe in the existence of God. Soon later, we went back to the country of Japan, this where the majority of my life I grew up. Japan is known as the missionary's graveyard. Less than 1% of Christians, second least reached nation in the world today. Majority was Shintoism and Buddhism. And I remember growing up in that context, it was really hard. It was hard. I hated going to school. People laughed at me, made fun of me because I wasn't able to speak English. I was different and because we were Christians. I remember going back home was just a terrible experience. My father, you see, had a major anger problem. And I remember living in fear of him as a little child. I cried out to God. I prayed beside my bed. And it seemed like God was silent. I just began to doubt God as I continued growing up. And eventually, I walked away from the faith. Age 12, I began to live in the pattern of this world, as scripture would say. I just began to live in drinking, smoking, drugs, and began to spend time with gang members. Fast forward to age 15, I was an angry, depressed youth. I remember running away from home, sitting under a bridge, not being able to deal with all the pressures of this life, characterized by hatred, hated myself, hated my life, hated my parents, hated my siblings, hated children, hated authorities, and I hated Christians. I remember for me, Christians were a bunch of hypocritical, pharisaical, judgmental people. I remember telling myself, I'll never become one of them. And above all, I hated God. I was radically depraved, morally corrupted, a sin-loving, God-hating preacher. Hated the very things that God loved and loved the very things that God hated. Boasted in my morality and my wretchedness. I was a mighty, as the Irish would say, a mighty sinner. That September of that year, I remember finding myself in the back of the police vehicle, being handcuffed, sent to court, sent to the police station, the whole nine yards, having my names and with barcodes in the back, taking pictures. And God didn't speak to me audibly, but I remember God just really just spoke so real, tapped on my heart, and I just began, I suppressed the truth, ignored it, but then God spoke to me again, saying, Jonathan, I have a bigger plan for you member sitting across from the principal in the office and says, we don't want students such as you. And I say, that's all right. I want to seek the Lord. So I got kicked out of school, um, left the girl I was with at that time, and began to seek the Lord. Age 15, I became a carpenter with any hope of Jesus. Soon after, my mother sent me to this missionary home in Tokyo area, and uh, I went cold turkey. Went the whole nine yards, AA, 12 steps, rehab, and nothing was working. But, wow, I met this pastor. Maybe you know this proverb. It says, the eyes are the window to the soul. Have you ever met somebody, you look him in the eye, and you know that they're the real deal? Yeah, this pastor was. He didn't judge me or looked at me differently or treat me like the rubbish of the world. He loved me. He prayed for me. He spent time with me. And uh, I remember evening service right afterwards. He was sitting right across from me. And I remember asking the question, Pastor, what is the secret? Why are you so different from any other Christian I've ever met in my life? I remember him looking in the eye and said, Jonathan, God loved me, saved me, and changed me. That is more than enough. Something penetrated my heart. I just began to weep for the very first time in my life. At age 16, I decided to profess Jesus Christ as Lord to the glory of the Father. And everything changed when Jesus came into my life. Let me tell you, nothing was ever the same. 
Oh, I was, I was no longer a hater of God, but I was a lover of God. I delighted in children and respected authority. I was not able only to forgive my father, but really love him from the bottom of my heart as well. Oh, for a thousand times to see my great Redeemer's praise as a hymn says, Crown him with many crowns as Lord upon his throne, being the royal diadem, and crown him as Lord. Oh, man, if you'd seen me back then, I was such a wretch. You would have probably wanted to run me down with your car. Even though I was the lowest of the low, the chief of all sinners, I had nothing to offer. Jesus died for me. Jesus saved me. Jesus took away my guilt. Jesus took away my shame. He took away my sin. That's the good news of Jesus. The King Jesus, God's Son, came and died for our sin. For those who believe and confess and follow Him with, with all our heart, may inherit eternal joy in Christ for His kingdom for his glory and for his name. And today, that's what Jesus did in my life. I serve as a pastor in a church in Missouri. And Jesus didn't just change my life. Jesus changed our whole family's life. My One of my brothers serves as a pastor in Japan, in Ishikawa Prefecture. My second brother, he serves as a, as a Christian professor at a Christian university. My younger sister, uh, she went back to Japan and she's teaching at a Christian academy, teaching in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, sowing the seeds of the gospel. My mother's still faithfully serving the Lord and following after him. And we prayed this major milestone. My father too came to know the saving grace of Jesus Christ eight years ago. So there's nothing that we boast in our flesh or our intellect or anything, but simply within the cross. Nothing in our hands we bring, but simply to the cross we cling. That is the hope of the resurrection of a risen Christ. And I know Jesus can change your life too. So believe in Him. Confess Him as Lord. Give your life to Him. And God's going to bring your supreme joy, characterized by this peace, this unspeakable joy that surpasses all understanding, by His amazing grace and His unconditional love. May the Lord bless you. And let us celebrate, for Christ is risen.